I remember it like it was yesterday, sitting on the back of the boat. It's 2011, and I am on my first ever field expedition to study sharks. Pretty amazing. And we're actually at a place called Tiger Beach, which is a very well-known dive site because it has one of the greatest aggregations of large sharks anywhere in the world. And we're about to do our first scouting dive of the trip, which would actually be my first time in the water with sharks over 10 feet. I was a little nervous, but I'd wanted to study sharks my entire life, but the truth is, if you really want to understand something, you have to spend time with it on its own terms. Hence, exactly why we were going in the water in the first place, to study their behavior, make some really interesting observations. But I was scared. And I remember talking to my mentor and asking him all sorts of questions, what I could expect, what were the rules, am I going to be safe? And this was all after a two-hour dive briefing from the boat captain. But... Nevertheless, I went in, heart racing, racing. My mask was fogging with sweat. I jumped in. 24 years of pent up fear and fascination in one giant stride. And I made my way down to the reef at 30 feet. And I was down there for a few minutes, getting my gear ready, checking my camera. And I noticed I was the only person down there waiting for the rest of my team. And all of a sudden, a 13-foot shark approaches me from the distance, this tiger shark. And she comes at me gently and slowly, and she's actually studying me. It was just the two of us. Our eyes lock, and I can actually see her pupil moving up and down, left and the right, trying to figure out exactly what I was. It was an incredibly beautiful experience. My heart stopped. It felt like time stood still. Really, really powerful. And then she just moved on. And in that exact moment, any innate fear that I had for sharks disappeared. In fact, in that experience, I launched a career studying and conserving sharks and other large predators. But this talk really isn't about sharks. It's about fear and how fear is a constant driving force in all of our daily lives that we must overcome in order to accomplish our goals. And I've learned firsthand that by conceptualizing and managing your own personal fears, you can improve your life for the better, inspire others, and yes, even change the world. So, what's fear? Well, the definition in the dictionary is it's an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous. And the key word here is danger because danger is so closely tied to the concept of fear that it can actually be traced back millions of years into animal evolution. And invertebrates, Fear is processed and managed by a part of the brain called the amygdala. And us too. It's in the deep part of our brain, and essentially what it does is it receives input from the outside, processes it and manages it, and elicits a response. This is the fight or flight response, and we all have this, every animal. But the manner in which wild animals process and manage fear is very different than the way we do it as humans today. Let's take a closer look. Here we have a zebra on the left. He's a male zebra hanging out in Africa, having a good day, trying to eat some grass, and then all of a sudden, he sees something on the horizon. It's a lioness coming right towards him, trying to kill him. So the zebra processes this really acute risk to his survival, and he issues a response. He runs away. Second example, middle school dance. And here's me at age 13. And we've all been here before, so I know you can relate to me. There's a girl on the other side of the dance floor that I really want to dance with. So I start making my way over to her, and all of a sudden, I get really nervous. I can't do it. I chicken out out of the fear of being rejected. I mean, can you blame me? Look at those braces. <laughs> so I go back to my friends, and that's it. Night's over for me. Fear drives the responses in both of these situations, the zebra and 13-year-old Austin. But the exact reason for this is very different. To put it simply, there is no evolutionary reason for us to be afraid of situations like example number two. There just isn't. But it goes a lot deeper than 13-year-old Austin and a zebra. In our society today, we are afraid of a lot. Fear of flying, fear of public speaking, fear of spiders, and these are all common fears that affect a significant proportion of our society. But 
I was extremely surprised when I saw that a recent study found 40% of us are afraid of our own personal future. That success, failure, finding a job, making money, finding love, saying I'm sorry. And these are significant roadblocks for us for accomplishing our goals. And this is something I see all the time, even in my close friends and family. We must go beyond our fears. We must face them head on because amazing things await us. We can change the world. And another trip to the Bahamas put this in even greater perspective for me. Now, by 2013, I thought I had a pretty good handle on my fears. I was really confident in life from my adventures with sharks, and sharks were showing me that life really isn't that scary. I was loving life as a graduate student, collecting cool data, making discoveries, publishing my papers. I even grew a small business. Things were happening. And then I met the oceanic white tip. I was on another photo and film expedition to the Bahamas to document this species, and the oceanic white tip is a very special and today very rare species of shark. It's a pelagic shark, which means that it lives in the open ocean, hundreds to thousands of miles offshore away from land. So it's not hard to imagine that food is really scarce for these animals. So anything that shows up on their territory, they're going to investigate it with a lot of interest. These sharks are not shy. In fact, the great ocean explorer Jacques Cousteau once said that the oceanic white tip was the most dangerous fish in the ocean. And after a week of spending time within the water like this photo, I could see why they had that reputation. These animals were coming right up to us, charging me, like on this picture here, coming right up to my camera. They were not shy at all. They were bold and at times kind of aggressive. But on the last day of the trip, I made a game time decision to go back into the water one more time. The light was just so good that I had to go back in and get a picture because the sun rays were penetrating the water. It was really special. And then I kept taking more pictures. The sharks were kind of keeping their distance. It was still pretty chill. And then everything changed. All of a sudden, some of the divers started getting out of the water. And this video is actually going to depict this exact moment I'm describing to you. The day was going on, so people started getting out. And all of a sudden, the sharks definitely knew that the numbers game had changed. They knew that the odds were now in their favor. And their behavior changed instantly. All of a sudden, I had 12 sharks over 10 feet surrounding me. I couldn't get out. In front of me, behind me, left to the right. And it was just me and one other person. And now our boat is drifting 100 feet away, and we're in 300 feet of blue water. Things are getting hot, and the shark's behavior is actually changing, like you can see here. They're starting to get competitive with one another, snapping, bumping my camera lens, even bumping my legs. But I stood my ground. If the sharks wanted to, they could have turned me into vapor in seconds, but they didn't. I held my ground and faced those fears. It was a pretty special experience. And essentially, I know that I overcame millions of years of brain evolution. And today, I know that this has had a huge impact on my career, my personal life and my professional life, even in just the last few years. But on that fateful day that I just described to you, I know that I rewired my brain. I reprogrammed my brain with new software for a life of confidence and fear management. And for me, it all comes down to this idea, this concept that I call the fear dial. This is something we all have inside of us. We're using it every day and every moment. You're all using it right now. I'm definitely using it right now. Think about it like a volume knob on a speaker. Turn it to the right, very fearful, loud. Turn it to the left, soft, not fearful. And I think that in general, our society is so quick to crank this thing over to the right. We're really fearful. We need to loosen our grip on this thing. We need to loosen our grip on our fear dial. And the outcomes will be amazing. And I know this because some of the greatest movers, shakers, innovators, and disruptors in history, they had to be masters of their fear dial. Think about it. Neil Armstrong, Rosa Parks, the Wright brothers, Martin Luther King Jr., soldiers, anybody who has ever battled cancer, even your parents. You don't need to go to the moon or study sharks to change the world. You don't. You just need to manage your fears 
Face them head on and realize that amazing things await you on the other side. Thank you. Thank you.